so my name is Mrs Chiverton and I'm here today to demonstrate to you electrolysis, one of the required practicals that you need to know. So electrolysis is using electricity to split up an ionic compound and the first um, substance we're going to look at today is um, copper chloride. So to do this we're going to need a power pack, we're going to need some electrodes um, and I'm just going to plug these in um, to our power pack here. Um, and then we're going to need a beaker to actually um, hold our substance that we're spitting and we're going to need this. This contraption simply allows us to have two carbon electrodes. We use carbon because it's um, very unreactive so it won't interfere with the reaction that we're having but of course it does conduct electricity and um, the mechanism it's put into just stops the two electrodes um, touching each other during the experiment. Now of course because um, I'm carrying out a practical I will melt my safety glasses so, we're going to simply pour um, some of the copper chloride into our beaker. We just need enough in that we're going to be able to um, have the electrodes touching um, into the actual liquid. I'm going to place those in place and then I'm going to tow the crocodile clips at the end. I don't want to... Okay, so again, just checking that your electrodes are actually touching into your liquid. And then we're going to switch the power pack on, checking it switched on at the wall as well. So, what we'll do is we will leave this running for a few minutes and you need to make careful observations when you're doing your required practical. And you should start to see something happening on the surface or near the surface of both of the electrodes there. So copper chloride is an ionic compound. It contains metal ions, that's the copper, and they will be positively charged because all metal um, atoms lose electrons to form positively charged ions. And we've also got chloride ions there, they're negatively charged. Non-metal ions always have that negative charge because they gain electrons to form the ions. So in that solution, because the lattice that normally holds ionic uh, compounds together has been broken, they're free to move around. And you should know by now that opposites attract each other. So these two electrodes, we have a positive electrode and we have a negative electrode and they will attract the oppositely charged ions. You can clearly see that at the positive electrode, that's the, the one on the right there, you can actually see some bubbles forming. And I'm just going to test that um, gas that's been formed with some damp litmus paper. And if I hold the damp litmus paper close to where the bubbles are being released, what we should see is that gradually that damp litmus should um, end up being leached. And you can just see that happening on the end of the damp litmus paper there. Now that's a positive test for chlorine um, atoms. Well, at the positive electrode, the negative chloride ions discharge electrons. They lose electrons and become chlorine atoms. And then they covalently bond to form chlorine gas molecules, which is what we tested for with the damp litmus paper. Let's move the visualizer over a little bit more. You can see the second electrode there. And from being a shiny black substance, you should now be able to see a sort of an orangey red um, metal starting to form on the end of that electrode. Now that is pure copper that's forming there. And again, the copper ions are positively charged. So they are attracted to that negative electrode where they um, pick up electrons and they form the copper atoms and the copper coats that electrode there. So that's electrolysis, splitting up a simple ionic compound that's been um, dissolved or melted to free the ions and forming two separate substances, the chlorine gas and the copper metal. Right, so sometimes um, in the exam papers, you might see a different setup from the one I showed you about electrolysis. It looks like it's been inverted. In this case, we've still got our solution of um, sodium chloride, in this case, in the tube here, and we've still got electrodes attached to a power pack. And you should be able to see as this is running, some gases, some gas bubbles forming at each of these electrodes. Now, sodium chloride solution is a little bit more complicated than when we just did the copper, um, copper chloride. In this case, not only have we got 
the ions from the salt, the sodium and the chloride ions. But when we put an electric current through water, that also ionizes. So in this situation, we've got two extra ions in there. We've got some hydrogen ions, which are positively charged, and some hydroxide ions, which are negatively charged. And what we're going to do is, in a few moments, I'm going to test the gases. So you will see which two gases have actually been produced at the two electrodes. So we've got one gas being produced at the positive electrode. Now I'm going to expect that to have been formed from a negative ion. And we have got, sorry, from a positive, yeah, a negative ion. And um, we've got another one at the negative electrode. And I've expected that to have been formed from the positive ion. So let this run for a little bit of time. Um, and you can actually see that these little test tubes across the top here are fitted over the top of the electrodes and they should be collecting some of the gas. And we need to, let it to run for a little while so it displaces any air that was originally in those tubes. And they will gradually be collecting the two gases that are formed. Now, if two gases are formed from a negative and a positive um, ion, we've also got some other ions left behind in the solution. And that will again be a positive and a negative ion and they will actually form uh, another ionic compound different to the original one that we started with. Okay. Right, so hopefully we will have collected enough of the gases here to be able to do a valid test on them. Okay, so we're going to test both of the gases. We're going to test the one that has come out of the positive electrode and we should see something very similar to what happened with the previous test. And you should be able to see on the visualizer there that that's clearly chlorine gas again because um, it's bleached that litmus paper. Right, we're going to have a go at testing the hydrogen. 